Hey folks, welcome back to another episode of Adventures in Dog Training with American Standard Dog Training and American Overwatch Canine Services. So check this out. We have Brooklyn. She is a three and a half month old Cane Corso. That's right, folks. That's how you pronounce it, Cane Corso, but it, it looks more like Cane Corso. Look, say it however you want, it doesn't matter to me. But she's an Italian Mastiff and she's here for a five week puppy board and train program. She's been here about five or six days and we've been working a lot on her healing, coming into heel position and healing next to us. Now, I'm gonna teach you today some of the beginning steps of teaching a puppy how to heal. Uh, so when we think about healing, understand that it's broken down into about nine or 10 steps. If you're looking for attention healing, what could those steps be? A, finding heel position. What does that mean? If she's 10 feet over there sniffing the grass and I call her, I want her to come to me into my left hand side. Now there's a couple ways to teach a dog to come into heel position. And what I mean by that, there's numerous ways to actually teach it, but there's also coming around the right and circling in, coming around the left and spinning around. There's so many different ways we try to, we, sometimes we let the dog dictate, right? What's their specialty? What are they into? How do they prefer to come into heel position? And then we'll maximize that. The other thing, aside from finding heel position, guess what else they need to do? When you start walking, when you step off with your left foot, if the dog's on your left, the dog's supposed to walk with you and stay on your left-hand side. Here's another part of healing. Not only must they stay on your left-hand side, attention to healing, they should be looking up at you and matching your pace. What's another part of healing? Left turns. Here's another part, right turns, U-turns, suddenly stopping, picking up speed. At the same time, guess what? We need to counterbalance that. Not only are you healing with me, but when I ask you to stay and I start walking, I need you to stay. Because here's an interesting side note. Someone left a kind of a dumb comment if you ask me. They said that to tell your dog to stay is a fake command. The stay command does not exist. Their argument for that is, and I understand what they're trying to say, what they're saying is, is that if you tell your dog to sit, the dog should remain in a sit no matter what you do. Okay, sure. What if your dog's in a sit and you need the dog to heal with you? What if you over teach the heel so much that it doesn't know anything but to follow you on a heel? That's not a bad thing per se, but now I need to counterbalance that, right? Like a teeter-totter. Sometimes they want you to stay. Sometimes I want you to heal with me. This is not a competition dog, folks. We're gonna train it to the best of our abilities in five weeks. Good girl, you ready for some food? I know it, I know it. Here's one, here's one. Good girl. <laughs> We're gonna train the dog to, our best of, to the best of our abilities, but it doesn't hurt to be super crystal clear with the dog. There's a time to stay. That's when I say stay. And then there's a time to walk with me. That's when I say heal. So that was my argument back to him. If the stay is a fake command, then maybe saying heal is a fake command. Maybe my dog should follow me on my left-hand side all the time, no matter what. That's a given, unless I say stay. So how about that? How about them apples, buddy? All right, enough talking smack. Let's get into it. Uh, so let's go ahead and start with finding heel position. All right, so let's talk about finding heel position. Let's just demonstrate it, then we'll talk about it. Free. First thing you do is get your dog away from you so you can get reps of coming back. Now I'm gonna free shape. I'm gonna see how she does on her own. Perfect. The, my only complaint there was she drifted back and obviously it took a while, but we've been free shaping this. We're probably one session in free on the free shape. What's free shape? Meaning I literally just stood here for a while, probably took like 20 minutes for her to figure out that coming over on this side, my hand messed her up. If that happens, you can use a food lure, a food lure, I'll show you the food lure because that's the easiest one to teach. The free shaping is very tricky for most people. Free. All right, here comes the food lure. I throw a piece of food out. If you come back, I have food here and I spin you into position. Yes. We don't need a perfect picture at the end. So free, I'll be happy with a dog that does, does just this. Here's your first rep potentially. Come on back. Good girl. You hear me clicking for what I like. Let's do that again. Free. There she goes. On her way back, again, I'm gonna open the door with my left foot and my hand. Open the door, she comes back, except this time I'm gonna make her come forward and I'm gonna click there. So she's getting paid for going behind me. You get many of those. What's many? A couple dozen, free. Then what you're gonna do is, here you go, baby, free. Go get those. Then after she's coming back, I want her to spin and come forward and she'll get paid right here, right here. The next step is to get her to get right there, but then sit. Yes, we need to work on left hand turns and right hand turns. 
And you may say, hey man, she's doing really good on that heel. And she is. Considering we're only on about day five of training and more importantly, we've only healed about two sessions. And not even full sessions. I'm talking about five minutes each session. So let's look at those left hand turns. I'm gonna help her out. Good. Now in the left hand turns, I have to cover more ground than she does. So she almost stays still while I go around her. Yes. But on the right hand turns, here's the, here's the ticket for success. When I go right, I always go fast to teach her to catch up. Show you that again. Right, always fast. And teach her when I go right, you have to go faster than me. Eventually, she'll fly around on the right hand side. She'll know right hand turns. She's gotta go faster. And then she'll always stay with me. And so that's all this is, is a game of follow the leader. Stay with me and you'll get paid. And I'm clicking when she comes into position. She's doing wonderful, look at that. And now we'll work on a, on a stop. We'll come to a stop and I'll show her when I stop, I need you to stop and sit, that's right. Could be a little cleaner, we'll try that one again. Come up and yeah, we missed it so we'll redo it. Yeah, killing it. We got Tejan off camera, supervising. <laughs> he's, he's down for a visit. Anything I'm missing, Tejan? We got left turns, right turns. You're, you're doing it, but also talk about finding the leg. Yep, I think we talked about that one already. He was talking about finding the leg is what some people call it. And uh, something else you have to consider is, again, we were working the dog from the front Coming past, turning in. Well, free. What if she's off to my left-hand side? Does she know how to come into position on the left? No, because I haven't taught her that. Because that's not a heel. I mean, she came to me, but she hasn't learned to come in and rotate into pretty, right? Another way would for her to know to pass me, come around the right, and then pick her up here, which I didn't. I failed at that. So you have to teach your dog to find heel position, find the leg from 360. All right, so it has to be broken down. The easiest way free for your dog to find it is from the six o'clock position, because guess what? They come right into position, beautiful. Now, if you can get that, then what we'll do, and we'll walk back this way so I can use my tool. Free. Now, you see I threw it about the five o'clock. Is that the five? The seven. And she should come in to position but she missed it. But that's the idea. We work it from the six, then the seven, the eight, nine, 10, and we'll show you again here. Free, I'm gonna go way out there. Go ahead and get it. And let's see her figure out how to get back. She's highly distracted. We have not been training outside much. We've been training inside mostly. Good girl, you see how she found it. Now let's go ahead and play this game, free, from like the uh, 10 or 11 o'clock position. Not bad, not bad. We could use some more enthusiasm, but I'm kind of letting her figure it out on her own. All right, so that's many, many of the parts and pieces involved with uh, teaching a puppy and or an adult dog how to off-leash heel. You'll notice we do have a, about a 10 or 15 foot drag line on. That's because we are on a street, we are outside. Um, make sure that drag line is not hooked up to say, let's say a prong collar, because you don't want to step on it, you don't want the dog to step on it and self-correct, but for a safety, for a safety line is what we're using. If you're doing this in your kitchen, no safety line needed. Again, we're gonna make this fun. She's not getting corrected. She's not getting yelled at. The worst thing we did with, to, to her is just deny her food if she didn't come into the sweet spot. So that's pretty much it. Tejan, am I missing anything else? Maybe they'll get walking backwards on the part two. Yeah, walking backwards, <laughs> walking backwards. <laughs> so there's still more to cover. And if you stay uh, maybe a little bit longer, I'll show you a little bonus for those who stayed. This has another purpose. Now she just got exposed to this for the first time last night. She was actually scared of it, but we consider this a, a type of place box. And if you can teach your dog to love coming in here, which she doesn't yet, she doesn't quite understand what this is about, then you can see how this helps to shape a behavior. This helps shape that this is the spot to be in because one of the things to think about, watch. I'm talking to her like she knows what it means. She <laughs> forget that she doesn't. When we are healing, imagine this was like a flying carpet and it's just staying next to me as we're moving. Her job is to stay on the X, 
stay on the imaginary place board. Stay in the circle that doesn't exist. Just stay in the sweet spot. If you're in the sweet spot, you get paid. If you fall out of it, pressure will come on. Free. She's a little gassed, so we're kind of overworking her at this point. But you can see how this will very, very cleanly shape what you're looking for. Good. Now, this box is oversized for her. That's how she was able to kick out. So your box should be made to the size of your dog. You can make these, you can buy these, but they're super awesome tools for teaching a dog how to come in to heel position. So I think that's it. About wrapped it up. Thank you all very much for watching. Make sure to like, share, subscribe. Stay tuned. We got four more weeks with this beautiful young lady. And when it's all said and done, she'll be fully off leash healing. Uh, you'll see the difference between, let's call it five days in and five weeks in. So again, thank you guys. We'll see you on the next one.